learn from the very beginning that Allah is Ghafoor, Rahim, Rahman, Wadud, which means part of the qualities, He is the most forgiving, the most merciful, the most beneficent, the most kind, the most compassionate, the most, you know, oft forgiving and so on. So why would He close our doors? Do you know when you are young and you want to do something and your mom or your dad knows that this is not good for you, you're too close to the swimming pool, what happens? Hey, come back. And you really like, no. If you're so small, you start crying. When you're eating those sweets and chocolates, enjoying them, and they know that there is a limit beyond which it will affect your health, your throat. Perhaps it might, you know, do something to you that's negative. So they take away the sweets. Sweets are lovely, right? Chocolates are even more beautiful, right? Everyone likes these things, but it's unhealthy for you. So what does your mom do? Out of love, she takes it away. But you start crying and you cry so much. It's such a big tantrum like the world came to an end. Haven't you seen little kids? Some of us who do have kids, if you've witnessed kids, you will notice they start yelling at the top of their voices when you are doing something for them that is very, very beneficial for them. For example, if a child is playing with a knife, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to take the knife away. And what does the child do? Wah! Have you heard that? The child starts crying, thinking that, you know what? What are you doing? Why did you take this knife away? I was enjoying myself. But if you didn't do that, whether the child cried or not was actually irrelevant. If you didn't do that, the child would have been affected negatively and possibly very great damage would have happened. Agree? So when you take away things from your child out of love, that that child really, really loves and really wants. Is it because of your mercy or because you don't like the child? Can you tell me? Please answer. Come on guys, I'm not going to eat anyone up. It's the mercy. Absolutely the mercy of Allah. Sorry, the mercy of the individual we're talking about. So therefore, in my life, when Allah, I believe firmly that He is the most compassionate, Trust me, when he blocks something and stops it, it is even more merciful than the mercy of a mother who has taken a knife away from the child. And as a result, the child cries. When we're adults and we have faith in the Almighty, we will not cry when things have not happened the way we want because we know they have happened squarely the way the Almighty wanted. You follow? That's faith. That's why the Almighty closes doors. I give you another example. You desperately want a job and you are trying, you apply for one, two, three. They called you for an interview, they said no. They called you for an interview, they said no. Third time interview, they said no. What do you say? Usually people will start saying, I think someone's blocked my path. I need to go to a sheikh or I need to go to someone to do rukia because I think my doors of sustenance are actually closed. And the Almighty says, don't you dare lose faith. I did it as a mercy for you, subhanAllah. Because I know the 10th job that you're going to apply for will be better than all the nine that you were blocked from. But we're too young, we don't know the future. When your mom took away the knife, subhanAllah, she didn't know the future, but she knew what was happening there and then, right? But when Allah takes away something or blocks something, He absolutely knows the future. I give you one example, and this is a very common example. We desperately want to get married to someone, and guess what? The door doesn't open, just doesn't. Something stops it, and you know what? It's a heartache, and we suffered, and we struggled. I promise you, if you've tried your best, and you've had faith in the Almighty, believe firmly that that wasn't for you. I've been in the same boat. Wallahi, I've been in the same boat and I'm not, you know, going to deny that. We wanted things we didn't get. At hindsight, you start acknowledging perhaps definitely. Indeed, the Almighty knows something we didn't know, don't know, maybe won't know. But one day when we meet him, we may ask him if we still recall that. You know, you blocked this door, I really wanted it. Tell me, if I had gotten married to this person, show me a video of what my life would have been like. Can he do that for you? 
Would the Almighty do that for you if you asked Him in Jannah? Yes, He would. Yes, He definitely would. If you asked Him in Jannah for anything, He would. If you remembered that in Jannah, because the thing is, would we or wouldn't we remember this in Jannah? I don't want to say yes or no, but I doubt it highly. You know, we'll be, we'll be in such... Jannah, by the way, is paradise. So when we get to paradise, we may not remember many things. I've given an example. In this fall, during a motivational evening, and even during other speeches of mine about the womb, you and I know that exactly six months prior to our birth, maybe four months prior to birth, let's say three months prior to birth, we were definitely in the wombs of our mothers. I know that I was. I know that now. But can any one of us remember what we enjoyed in that womb? Not a soul. If you were to communicate with a twin of yours, if you were two in that womb, and you were to say, gosh, we're loving it here, man. Would you ever believe that there was life outside the womb? The answer is no, you wouldn't. You would never believe it. To you, that was your world. Everything happened and you were wondering why the fluid that's coming into you was so tasty. But that was your mom eating perhaps a bar one by mistake. Right? You know what I just said? I see you guys don't like bar ones. Make it a Mars bar. Make it a Snickers. Okay, maybe you don't like that, right? Any, make it one of my favorites, a flake. Okay, or a crunchy. Wow, more interesting, right? Yeah, and you didn't know, and for you, wow, I love this. It's so enjoyable. Ooh, it's tasty. Whatever must have happened. But to be honest, as you grew older and bigger in there, you wouldn't have believed that just a membrane away is a whole real world such that when I get into it, I will never ever remember where I am right now. But there was life already. The soul is blown at 120 days, according to the teachings of Islam, right? So when the fetus gets to 120 days, the soul is blown. Life begins in almost its entirety. The only thing left is birth and breathing, right? But prior to 120 days, according to what we're taught as Muslims, the heart is pumping, definitely, but it doesn't depict, depict the life of an individual in the sense of a soul being blown in it. Just like medicine says that this person is brain dead. When they're brain dead, what does that mean? The heart is pumping. They say, but this person's as good as dead. Gone. They'll even take the heart out to transplant it somewhere, or they'll take something else out to transplant it somewhere. I'm not going to speak about those rulings because that's not our topic, but brain dead, the heart is pumping. The heart of an individual will keep pumping even if you've taken it out of that body and you've given it to someone else and transplanted it into another body. It will pump in that body. Perhaps for another 20 years, it was just taken from a person who was brain dead. Did that heart depict the life of the individual from whom it was taken away from? No. You see what I mean? So we believe that life has definitely a heartbeat to it, but on top of the heartbeat, there has to be a soul. If the heartbeat is gone, the soul is gone. And if the soul is gone, not necessarily has the heartbeat stopped. Subhanallah. Did you understand what I just said? Just like when a little, you know, at a few weeks, the heart starts pumping. A few, maybe five, six, I don't know, perhaps. We might have a few who are specialized in that here. Five to six weeks, so I'm right, mashallah. The heart starts pumping. By the way, I'm a father of 10 kids. Alhamdulillah. I love this. So, and I delivered my last child. I became an honorary gynecologist. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I tell you something. I just realized what I said. But it's a fact anyway. So my brothers and sisters, to be honest, that heartbeat at 120 days, when the soul was blown, it's complete. You have life. You know what's going on. You, you actually start uh, reacting to sounds and to various other factors of your surroundings, right? That's why we say education begins prior to birth. What the mother listens to affects the child. You want to listen to something beautiful, soothing. You know, it will help the child. You want to listen to something or there is yelling and screaming and shouting. You know, I don't want the child to be born and say, Shut up, first thing, you know. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. But the point I'm raising is 
you know that you were in the womb but you don't remember a thing and you wouldn't have dreamt you would not have dreamt that a membrane away is a life that nobody can describe right now in the same way when you go into the hereafter it's just a membrane away a membrane away you know birth takes the labor the labor they call it the labor right it takes or oh, it differs from person to person. May Allah make it easy for everyone. Just say Ameen. Okay? Sometimes it's a few hours. Sometimes it's more than just a few hours. Sometimes it's a few days. Sometimes it's a few minutes. Right? Just like that. There is something known as Sakarat. The pangs of death. When you're leaving, your soul is removed. Sometimes it takes a few days. Sometimes a few hours. Sometimes a few minutes. And sometimes a split second and you're gone. Subhanallah. Did you hear what I just said? So, and in the same way that you went from one life to another, life in the womb to life in this world, in a way that you can't, you cannot remember anything that happened in this particular, meaning in the womb, in the previous sort of stage, you will only remember certain things in the next stage. Whatever the Almighty wants you to remember, you will remember. Otherwise, a lot of it, it's going to become so irrelevant because Allah says, you know, when you get to the hereafter, it's actually something amazing. It's, you cannot describe it to the human brain that exists on earth right now, except by way of example from a distance. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, فيها ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر. You go to paradise. In it, there will be that which no eye has ever seen, that which no ears have ever heard, that which has never crossed the mind of a person. You know, in the Arabic, they say, Wala khatara ala qalbi bashar. It didn't even cross the heart of a person. What was in your heart? So I'm waiting to get there, subhanAllah. But when I get there, I can ask the Almighty, you know what? If I remember at that stage for my cat, I could. But you're not going to remember your cat. So don't fight with me right now. Let's get there and see.